Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing how I'm getting organized for 2021. Last semester, I started using Notion and it has been a game changer in how I get organized, especially for uni. If you don't know what Notion is, it is an all-in-one workspace where you can keep wikis, projects, tasks, notes, and documents. Essentially, it's like a digital bullet journal. It is offered both online and as a desktop app, and as a student, you get the personal pro plan for free when you sign up using your student email, but the personal plan is free for everyone. If you're interested in duplicating my Notion, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. First off, I'm just going to show you how you duplicate a workspace with using the workspace that I'm sharing with you today. So after you click the link, you will be presented with this page. Then for my Notion, you select the language first. So I'm just going to select English and then when you're on this page, which is the actual Notion that I've created for you guys, you just click the duplicate button at the top and it will now add it to your personal workspace so you can now fully edit and customize and do whatever you want with it. And with that said, let's go back and get organized. So as you know now, this semester I decided to create my very own workspace Last year, I did only find different templates that I liked and I sort of combined them just so that I can focus on organizing and well, getting to know how Notion works. There are so many amazing free templates online, so if you're a beginner, you don't have to make everything from scratch. So this reorganization started by simply moving around everything on the dashboard page and I added some cute photos, embedded a Spotify playlist, and I tried to just color coordinate everything. The brown color notion is my new favorite as you will see. Now for my today page and monthly overview, I've added some new custom buttons so now you can just click to add new to-do list item instead of using the Notion commands. I also added the new timeline feature, so for days I want a more strict or timed to-do schedule, I can use this to time all my tasks. Now I'm moving on to the university page. This is the page that I've totally renovated and I'm so happy with the new system I've created. I wanted to stick to one table as much as possible, so I created a cute gallery for all my current classes and embedded my master schedule into each class. Then I started reorganizing the master schedule and each individual class. Lastly, I created the page structure and added another Spotify playlist, a quick link section, and my course schedule, and some photos and quotes for decoration. Here is a couple of hours later when I had found all the photos I liked. I briefly talked about active learning, so I wanted to include a reminder on active learning and space repetition, and then I added it as a little section for each class and in the master schedule. So this was everything I filled from the creation process, and now we're moving on to the full tour of the template. Here is the final dashboard or homepage if you will. At the top I have a quote and the focus for this week. Then on the left hand side I have all my continuous pages. In the middle I have my pages related to academia. Then I have my learning and ideas section. And lastly in the other section I have a random practice page for just trying out different Notion features and testing it out before actually implementing it into a proper page. The today page is simply my daily to-do list and you can easily add new to-dos by clicking the button and delete them when you're done for the day. The monthly overview is where I plan my tasks for the month. The idea is that when the month is over, you just move it down to past months and create a new overview for the next. 
Here I just have my priorities for the month and then a simple weekly overview for the entirety of that month. Here is the habit tracker. I tried to keep this pretty simple as well so you can easily take off each habit. It's also easy to change the habits you want to track and you can add monthly views if you want to. The notes page is a database to just keep different notes. It can be journaling, recipes, pretty much anything you want to keep. Then I've created a people database for keeping track of people. This is mostly related to my career page, which I'm getting into in a bit. But here you can keep an overview of people from networking events, professors, employers, classmates, etc. The idea for it is pretty much a brain dump page for creative ideas. This is where I've written down different video ideas mostly. Of course, making content online is a very niche thing to do, but the thought is to have all your ideas or business plans collected in one space. So just make it your own. Next up is my pet project page. I'm really happy with this one as well. And this is where I organize my hobbies. So I made it into a piano tracker page with a playlist of classical music pieces, my piano routine, and a progress bar for each piece I'm learning. Of course, this is just an example, so feel free to change it to whatever you like. Now moving on to the career hub. Here is where I have an overview of my cover letters and CV as well as companies I'm interested in, a link to the people database, and an overview of my past internships. My most used part is definitely the master application tracker that I use for tracking my internship applications and I get an overview of which positions I've applied to, which I haven't, and if I've gotten an interview and so on. Now it's time to look through the university page. It includes the master schedule, which is just a quick link on the dashboard page. The first thing you see are some important links at the very top. You add links by writing, for example, Google Drive, then double click the text and select link to paste the link to your Google Drive. Below, I have my timetable, which is color-coordinated to match my calendar and the courses further down. To change the already existing timetable boxes, you can click the six dots and change the color of the box. Double tap the text and select A to change the text color, and of course, you can move the boxes around. To create a new box, you click the plus sign and write callout, or you write slash callout and place it where you like. On the left hand side, I have organized quick links for pages that I use frequently and of course added another Spotify playlist. Below, I have space where you can organize your previous semesters if you have used Notion previously with a different setup. All my courses are organized in this very cute gallery with the course name tag and professor name visible in the thumbnail. As you might have noticed, the tag color and emoji match with the timetable. I have pre-made five different example classes that you can change to fit into your own schedule. If you need to add a new one, you can click the new button and then select class as the template to get a ready-made class template. Each class has a section for syllabus and resources, lecture notes, active learning and space repetition, and the master schedule for that class. If you want to know more about active recall and space repetition, I've added a section dedicated to the topic at the bottom of the university page with online resources and a sample guide. Now I'm going to walk you through how to edit the pre-existing classes in the master schedule and the master schedule itself. Let's say you're doing maths this semester as a class. Then firstly, I'm going to write in all the information about the class by editing one of the example classes. Here I'm just doing the example class, but it's the same process for all the other ones. 
on class name, click the tag and hover over enter class name here. Then click the three dots and you'll be able to change the name and or color of the tag. On professor, I'm adding a new name tag just to show how tags are added. Click the tag and start typing the new tag name and click create. Now scroll down to the master schedule and click the arrow. We are now in the full master schedule page where you see an overview of all of your courses. Click on course and configure options. A list of tags will appear and since I'm editing the example class, I'm going to add the course tag maths to the list and change the color to match the color in the maths page. Now all assignments and lectures related to maths or the previous class name are connected to the maths course. Back in the maths page, let's add an assignment and a lecture. Lectures and subtopics are automatically added to the space repetition pages. In space repetition, you can keep track of when you should revise a topic again. At the date you've learned the topic and the next day you should revise will appear in the next rep column. Then there is also a progress board where you can drag each topic to how well you did in revision that day. If I head over to the master schedule, I will see an overview of all of my classes and you can see that what we've added is included here as well. Adding new assignments, lectures, or topics here is the same process. Of course, you can just delete the sample information I put in. This will not affect the table structure or anything. If you have less than five classes, you can delete the ones you don't need like so. I also thought I would quickly show you how to add a new class to the gallery. Click new and select class as a template. Fill in all the tags at the top as we did before. Scroll down to the master schedule and click the arrow. Click on course and configure options and add the course tag to the list. Go back to the course page and scroll back down to the master schedule. Now you have to add the course filters so that it only shows that class inside the master schedule for the class. Click on filter, then click on select an option and select the course tag. It should now say course is programming in this case, or it should say course is whatever course you have put in. Then repeat the last step for all the table views and you've now set up a new class. Okay, now I'm moving on to the academic plan. 
And what's cool about this page is that it's all connected to the course gallery. So when you add a class to the gallery, it is automatically added to the academic plan. I really wanted to have an overview of how many credits I have in total for my degree, so that's what this list is for. You can edit the year tags and add new years and add your old classes to the list if you like. Of course, delete all the random classes I've added. Another feature I really wanted was a complete overview of my degree. Since I have taken classes out of the order and I just wanted a visual of my full course load sorted by what year the class belongs in. This leads us to the full academic plan. Here you can drag the classes you've added in the courses and credits and just drag them to the year they belong in. For example, the new programming class I created, let's say it's a second year class. Here you can also add years or delete them, but make sure that you move your classes to no year so that they don't get deleted as well. Also, if you click new under no year, you can add your future semester classes. Overall, I'm so so happy with this page because now I don't have to visit the uni website all the time to see my degree timeline. Lastly, we have Year Abroad, which is more or less a blank dump page I've used for notes and to keep important documents, etc. A little pro tip, any pages you frequently use can be saved to your favorites by clicking the favorite button in the upper right hand corner. And that concludes the complete tour of my Notion. If you're interested in duplicating my Notion, you can do so for free by clicking the link in the description. I really hope you found this video helpful in organizing your Notion or just gave you an insight to what this application is and how you can use it to get organized yourself. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.